Good morning. Good morning. Hello, hello, hello. Happy Monday. Welcome to the Shack Shack. Come on in. Hour 101. Milestone, milestone. Come on in. It's good to have your company. Uh, is the volume okay? Lucy? Darling Lucy, could you just text me and let me know? Good morning, Helen Stevens. Come on in. Have you got your tea? Have you got your coffee? I feel I know you really well. Good morning, Susan. Come on in, everybody. I wonder how many of us will be here today. I know several have got to go back to work now, haven't we? Slowly, slowly, catch your monkey. People are returning back to work. Come on in. Thing is, a lot of you catch up afterwards. So if you're playing catch up now and you're not here live, then welcome. Welcome. I, in my head, you're here too. Okay. Mmm, lovely cup of tea. Lovely cup of tea. So come on in. Did you have a good weekend? Did you? What did you get up to? It was, um, it was really rainy here. It was, it was on off, on off, you know. Got caught in the rain in the woods yesterday, but that was nice. I actually like that. Fortunately, we took an umbrella with us. <laughs> Bit of luck. Took two umbrellas, in fact. Um, and I wasn't wearing flip-flops, so it was the right result. Yeah, it was lovely, actually. It was quite nice, quite different. So come on in and um, grab a seat. Get your tea, get your coffee. We're on baubles this week. I thought there's so much. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking a whole week on baubles. And then I thought I could spend a whole year on baubles. Baubles are just a shape, aren't they? They're just a vehicle. So there's so much we can do this week. And it was so nice. Did I just see good morning from Australia? Good morning, Vivian from Australia. Wow. It was so nice uh, yesterday and this morning to read on the blog, on my blog, all the different places that you still want to go and where what we could doodle. Ah, brilliant. I look forward to this evening. I'm going to sit and go through that very slowly. Very slowly. And then we're going to pick some winners for the blog candy and we'll get them all posted up on the blog this evening. Loads of people. It's really nice, you know. It's nice that you read the blog. I like that. I like that you post your beautiful artwork on Clarity World Wide. Isn't that a fabulous community, eh? Good morning from Peterborough. Hi, Sheila. Yorkshire. All over the place. The internet's a magical thing, really. There's a lot of good and there's a lot of bad, isn't there? Hey? Sometimes I think the instant news I could do without, you know, because it's there, isn't it? Like that. Two minutes ago, fire in Vacaville. It's like, oh, no, I, you know, I would have preferred to hear that from Mark, really, my son, rather than on the news. But hey-ho. He's OK. Jane, thank you for asking this morning. Yeah, no, he's good. Um, he said it's quite smoky in San Francisco, but they've managed to contain the fires. And also, where he lives is on the city side in San Fran proper. And the fires are on the other side of the Bay Bridge. So... Um, the, when when you go the Bay Bridge is the double decker one where you can you go out underneath and you come in on top or other way around the Bay Bridge. There's the, there's the Golden Gate Bridge on one side, and then there's the the Bay Bridge, and the Bay Bridge takes you out to Oakland, and then it goes to to Vallejo and Benicia and Vacaville. And if you stay on that road, eventually you'll end up in Sacramento, and the fires are in that direction. I used to live out there. Still got people that I know out there. And so so Vacaville is where the biggest problem was. So Mark was saying that the, the smoke is coming in over the bay. Obviously, it's, it, you know, he, he knows there's a fire, but it'd have to cross the water. There's a, it'd, have to, it'd have to come quite a way to get into the city. But, you know, what do we know? What do we know, hey? He's in touch every day letting me know that he's okay. Um, and that. He said, I suppose the good news is we're all wearing masks, so we're not inhaling all the smoke. Come on in. What's the time? Lucy, sound is perfect. Well, I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear it. And it is 10 o'clock. 
So there you go. Good morning, everybody. Come on in. Welcome to the Shack Shack. Safe, happy and creative. Stay home and craft. And here we are every morning, 10 o'clock. We celebrated 100 hours on Friday. That is an achievement, you know, for you and for me. 100 hours. That's that's pretty. That's that's some flying time, isn't it? 100 hours under your belt. <laughs> and so, you know, I have no intention of going anywhere, guys. And uh, and I'm I'm here and I choose to be here. Uh, it's not something I have to do. It's because I want to do it, and that's important too, you know. And and you're here because you want to be here too. And there's a lot to be said for that, isn't there? You know. So um, I I think that what's important is that I just stick to the plan and I stay here. And what you have to do, if you have to go to the dentist or you have to go somewhere or you have to go to work or whatever it is you have to do, provided that you know that I'm always here, then that's a good calling place for you, isn't it? So that if you're having a bit of a wobble one day, you think, oh my God, hang on a minute. I wonder if she's still there. <laughs> Let me go and listen to her waffle, <laughs> okay? Having said that, on Friday this week, and I will remind you earlier on, on Friday, I'm on the television on herchanda.com and I'm on at nine o'clock until 10 o'clock, all right? And then I'm on at one o'clock until two o'clock. So what I'm going to have to do at 10 o'clock, our 10 o'clock session, I'm going to move it to 10.30, if that's okay with you. And then that will, that means that if you want to watch the mixed media show on her chanda, I've got some fantastic new stamps from uh, Tina Cox, mandala stamps, she's beautiful, ridiculous. Okay, just phenomenal artwork. So I'm going to be showcasing Tina's uh, mandala stamps. Um, but I remember when we had the little hiccup with the sound, so I know how to reconnect everything, but it will take me a good quarter of an hour. Therefore, we'll finish on the telly at 10 o'clock. That gives you a chance, if you've been watching, to go have a potty break, make a cup of tea, have one for me, and then come back in time to have our doodle session at 10.30, okay? I'll let you know a bit sooner than that. I'll let you know again. But just putting it out there for you, that the... 10 o'clock session is going to be 10.30 this coming Friday. Right, are we ready to get going then? Lynette, good morning from a very long word. That must be Snowdonia Mountains. There you go. I'm glad you mentioned that. <laughs> Cr crikey. That's, how do you say Kerry Drudion? Chiridi. Chirigi. There you go then. Welcome. <laughs> Right, now, on Friday, we were looking at baubles and we're going to continue looking at baubles. So let's have a look, because I thought, I thought we'd have a little recap and then we'd translate, we'd do a transfer. So in other words, what I mean by that is that we'll, we'll take, because we're only working on tracing paper at the moment, aren't we? So it's what we're doing in effect here, right, my friends, is we're making all our templates. All our templates for stars and snowflakes. We're getting the hang of how they work. Mm -hmm. But what we need to do next is transfer them. So to do that, let's have a look. We'll just have a little recap first so that we know where we... Because some of you won't have been around last week. So we'll have a little catch up. This is important for me as it is for anybody else. We'll have a little catch up and then what we'll do is we'll do a transfer. In other words, we'll take it to the next step where we go from the tracing paper to the card or the paper and then we ink and then we rub out the liner and then we put the shadow in. And that's when we get to the proper doodle, the doodle oodle. All right. So quick recap. Loads of templates. Now, digi downloads. Anybody that's new, if you're looking at this, saying, well, where did you get all these lovely things from? Um, lovely Lucy's in the building with you. And if you haven't got the downloads yet, Lucy will give you the link so you can print them off. And if you haven't got access to a printer, not a problem, then what I want you to do is give Lucy, not on public Facebook though, right? Give Lucy your uh, your mailing address and she'll make sure that you get the digi downloads. Lucy, your email address, lucy at claritystamp.com. 
she'll let you know. And then email your mailing address to her privately at Clarity Stamp, and then we'll make sure that they go out first thing today in the post. Okay? Cool. Let's have a look what we're doing. So these are the downloads, aren't they? Let me put my other glasses on. There we go. Right. So, so what we decided, when we're doing a snowflake, we decided we definitely need, just let me, what we need is six points. So we, we figured out that we need a, a hexagon to do this, don't we? Six pointer. And then what we did was, this is, this was the, we, we did the skeletons. Let me just find my skeleton. Right, here's a good skeleton. Right, so what we did was we loaded up on tracing paper and we created skeletons, you see, by using the hexagons, all the different nests. And it, it gives you the inside, doesn't it? Do you, do you see? But then what we did was we took the, the skeletons and we turned, we went round the outside and put mantles on them. So you, instead of having the bony bit, the bit inside, we went round the outside and we ended up with these lovely, lovely, um, let me come in a bit closer. These lovely snowflakes, didn't we? I don't want to come in too close because we've got, we've got more things to do yet. So I wanted to adjust some sizes as well. So, so the point is that you take your, your, your bones, your skeleton, and then you overlay and then you go around the outside of the skeleton and that's how you get that lovely soft snowflake effect. So we did that and we did that. That's what we learned, wasn't it? And then, let me just recap on that. So that was really what this was for, wasn't it? Right, this is, we're going to use that later on as well. We, we keep coming back to it. But then what we did was, well, of course we gave you our, our bauble shapes, didn't we? This template. And what we've done now is we took this bauble, for example. Let me just come in here. I've got it under here. We took the bauble. We traced that out. This is what we're going to be working with. We traced that out. And then we put our, uh, our snowflakes inside it didn't we? So that's how we got, that's how we filled our snowflake uh, bauble by, even though the, bauble, the snowflake might be too big for the bauble itself, like that, what we did on Friday was we moved it over, do you remember? And then we put the littler ones here and there. So what I wanted to do this morning, okay, is two things. First of all, because that's quite a big bauble, isn't it, for a let me take all this out of the way. That's quite a big bauble, you know. I mean, it's beautiful and it would work absolutely gorgeous if you, let me see if I've got a card blank here. That'd be nice. There you go. So let's say we've got these card blanks, right? This is a five by five, like that. It's a five by five card blank. Or you could do a six by six, whatever you prefer, right? So that would sit on there, just lovely. Right? And don't forget, the other thing, you don't have to put it bang in the centre. You could put it down like so. And you know that you could actually bring it down off the page as well. See, that's, there's something about what I call partial art. Let's call it partial art. I'll be doing more of that with Tina's uh, mandala stamps on Friday. And what I mean by that is that you don't stamp out the whole thing. You go off the page a bit. It always looks really cool. So, so don't, don't always think that you've got to put the whole thing in the middle. Just come off the page like that. And that will look really, really nice. And then here we go. Look, you hang it there with a hook. And then here it says, um, there you go. You could take one of our stickers and you could just write Happy Christmas. Or you could doodle Merry Christmas from us to you. You know? So that's what I, I wanted to show you. First of all, we're going to transfer this and then we're going to learn how to do the shading. Right. And then the other thing was, I thought, well, how do we make a smaller bauble? Let's doodle a smaller bauble. We, we're not, we're not beyond making these smaller, are we? Come on. 
We've been to Holland, we've been to Africa, we've been to New Mexico, we've done dream catches. You don't think we can't make a little bauble a bit smaller? Uh, hello? Mm -hmm. And so, so that's what we want to do today, is just don't think that you're stuck with this size. We'll just go a bit smaller. You've got the shape, haven't you? Right? The circles are easy. You know that's going to be a piece of cake. So, so let's do that and then we'll, we'll, we'll go from there, okay? So the first thing we want to do is make the bauble smaller. If, for example, we're going to go, let's keep it, it's the shape that we're after. Don't worry about the top bit, we'll add that afterwards. These, these bits we can add afterwards. It's the shape we're talking about. You could take any one of these shapes and get your eye in. You don't need a template. You can go free, you can go freestyly. The only one really where I would say the most difficult one to go freestyly would be the circle. And the circle, well, you can draw around anything, can't you? Hello? Look, baubles a go go. You've got cups, you've got, there you go. Which, what size do you want? Pick a size, any size. Hey? Look. So, but to me, the one that would be the most difficult one to go perfectly would be the round one, ironically. So that one you could draw straight round. So let's have a look. Any of the other ones, let me just show you what I'm talking about. If you take that one, let's just take this one. And you just got to get your eye in, get your HB pencil out. Because what we're looking at is coming in about that much all the way round isn't it so you just make your mark right and then you come round and if you come into there like that and then round you go and as you go round look hardly touching the paper right keep it coming right that's where you're going hardly touching the paper round we go come round here there you go Barely touching the paper. Maybe, can you even see what I'm doing? Yeah, I'm sure you can. Right, and then you'll come in like that. Right, and when you're happy with the shape you've got, then you can come in, be bolder, right? So you just hold it over the big shape, and then you just create a gully all the way around. And if you, if you want, if you feel the need, this is just a little trick, really. Look, hold it like that. Basic, isn't it? If you feel the need to, because it's sometimes it's easier to turn the work, isn't it? You're all right with this. You're cool with this. Right, see, then you come round. Yeah, definitely better to turn the work like that. There you go. Turn the work a bit further. So I've already laid down the basic shape, haven't I? See? Then round we go. Then as you come round, like that. So I've got my shape now. Do you know, and if you were designing a bauble, let's just pretend that we're doing a pattern round here and we want to do something really beautiful. Hey, you see? Now we want this shape, but in miniature, don't we? That would look pretty weird on the top of that. So now we're just going to echo this, but smaller. So you come up and again, what you do when you're doodling, you just hover a bit, see until you're happy. It's got a bit of a curve on it, like that. That'll do. And then you're gonna do the one on the inside first. There you go, and do the one on the outside. Bang in the middle. There you go. That'll do nicely, thank you. And then we'll go like that. See, so this is gonna come in like you would on the big one as well. So it's quite easy, isn't it? Look, see? And then when I take that away, I've got my smaller bauble. See? I've got my smaller bauble. And if I feel that I want to change it, it's all only it's all only in pencil at the moment. So say I feel it's a little bit too wide, right? Then I can come in here, like come in like that. And I can just lop off the, the ends, look. See? 
So I'll lop off that end. It's all about establishing the shape now. Then I'll come in here and I'll lop this side off as well. Say so yeah, I think that might look better, like that. There. See what I'm doing? Now I'll come round here. And that, you know what's brilliant about this? It's your bauble, you drew it. Freehand. There you are, take that one out. It's good, isn't it? And I probably took the most challenging one, apart from the round one, to show you. There, how's about that then? Then you take your... There you go, and you've got a lovely shape there. Lovely shape bauble, ready to inject your art into. Okay, so so you're using the you're using the outline. Cool, you get it. So there you go. So that's the first thing I wanted to show you was how we make them smaller. Is that all right? Easy. There's my little round one. Look, I've already done that. I've done my little round one as well. Because, because often when you make a card, what looks really, really nice is if you've got a big bauble and then a little one in the distance. So you do a little fern branch, for example, or you hang it from the top of the card blank. Do you, do you know what I mean? So you've got one big one that's coming off the page and maybe a smaller one higher up. It's composition, isn't it? Okay? All these arty little tricks, they're not difficult, they're very achievable. You know, when you, when you start, you work it out, it's, it's nice. So, the round one. Are you cool with the round one? You know, don't you? The easiest way to do the round one is either draw around something, draw around something, leave a little gap at the top, add the little hooky thing, okay? And if you haven't got, you should have something to draw around, egg cup, anything like that will do. There's not a rule. There's not a rule. And, and if you haven't got anything to draw around, you've got that grid, haven't you, that we gave you? That one. Okay, draw around that. Nice. That's what I did. So, right, take them off, put them back on, and we'll start again. So that's, that's the first thing I wanted to cover with you today, was taking a size to a smaller size. Taking a size to a smaller size. See, because now, what we've got going on now, you c they don't, all the baubles in the picture don't have to be the same shape, do they? I got, you got eight different ones here. So now you're looking at changing the shapes as well. I mean, listen, graphic artists, if you want these smaller and you've got the digi downloads, right? All you've got to do is go, go back to your printer and when you get to print, hit 50% scale, hit 60% scale. If you don't want to do freehand, print them out to the size you want them. Okay? That's easy too. Just if you feel, you know, if you feel that's a bit too... And I understand, not everybody's got a steady hand, you know, and if that's the case, before you get to print, and if you're not sure, ask somebody. It, the point at which you change the scale when you're printing out, you hit Command Print, and then when you get to the print stage, that's when you can change it to landscape or, or portrait. And I know I'm teaching a lot of you to suck eggs, but many of you don't use your printers. And that's the point where you go into the scale and you can change it, okay? Just do one, make sure it's right first. <laughs> okay, don't waste all your paper. All right, I know I'm teaching you to suck eggs, but that's just a, uh, an added uh, tip. Right now, let me have a think, let me have a think. Sip a tea and have a think. Everybody okay? Are you all there? Oh, I can't see a blimmin' thing with those glasses. Morning, Barbara. Morning. Gonna be busy Friday. We're gonna be busy Friday. Morning, Pat. Yeah. Oh, what? You mean we're going to be busy Friday with Tina's mandalas? Oh, yeah. Oh, and they're in groovy. Beautiful. She said they were, took her so long to draw. And when you look at them, 
I've got to show you a piece of artwork, right? Do you want to see something insane? Stay there. Hang on. Look at this while I run and go. So, because we're so overwhelmed, like over overwhelmed, I said to Paul, we're going to have to lean on the design team a little bit because we're going to have to lean on the design team for the demos for the TV because it takes hours. Right, check, right, you ready? <laughs> when we saw this one, we were like, D Paramore, you are insane. This is ridiculously fantastic. Right, you ready? Okay, so this is a mandala. I ought to show you the mandala. Okay, let me show you the mandala so you understand what I'm talking about, just in case you're not in tune. So this is Sheila Metzelaar's, <clears throat> and these are the samples that I want to work towards when I'm, when I'm presenting the stamps, right? So here we go. Check these out, right? So this is Sheila's contribution, and I'm going to show you how, all about partial stamping. Right, do you see what I was talking about? It's the same idea as baubles, really. Now, pretend that that is a bauble. Oh, what? Okay, so, so now you see the mandala, okay? <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. Right, are you ready? You have to see it from the side to understand what I'm talking about. Look. <laughs> so that, I know, trippy, isn't it? This is, let me see if we can see it better on this. It's 3D. It's folded, 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 folded. Do you see? Like a concertina. D Paramore. How about that? And all coloured in. So I'm going to show you how to make this. I've got to figure it out and let you know. <laughs> D, thank you so much. Look at that. I will deconstruct it and then I'll show you on Friday. Aren't they glorious? I know. I'm surrounded by very, very, very clever people and I'm very lucky. Yes, yeah, so where was I? Mandalas, you said we're going to be busy on Friday. I think you're right. Yeah, beautiful. We've had to slow down design because we're only a smaller team now. Um, we're a, a vastly reduced team, so so we, we can't we can't bring out as much newness as we used to. Um, but then when we do, it's pretty spectacular. And uh, and Tina's mandalas in groovy, oh, it's crazy. But I'm just on I'm just doing the stamps on Friday. I think I hope. Yeah, I am. I'm doing stamps. It's mixed media. Now, so let's have a look, because I wanted to show you, so we've reduced the size of the bauble, okay, we've reduced the size of the baubles, so what I wanted to do as well is have a little recap, because it's been a couple of days since we did the stars. Do you remember, we start, that's where we started, was with the stars. So let me just find my artwork before I, here we go. So I want to just, take this away for a minute and I want to bring in the stars right because they're quite they're very lovely very lovely and they will give us a really cool see the three different sizes here right they're exactly the same design but there are different they're just different sizes on the hexagon so if we go to our template our download so I'm trying to re I know that a lot of you pop in and pop out so it's like recapping. I don't think it does any of us any harm to have a recap, do you? Let me take my pencil and I'll show you. So on this one, see the six points? I've gone in there like that and I've picked up those six points. And then I've come in and made a... I've come in a... It doesn't matter, I can come in. Depends how pointed I want my star to be, doesn't it? Oh, it depends. So then I can go into this one. Look, tiny, tiny right, which is only like four in, and then I come into to make my star, right. This one is just a different, I've just gone to a different hexagon and pointed in. So that's how, so for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, let me just show you. If I pick any hexagon, let's pick, let's pick this one, right, so I'll pick this hexagon, and then I'll make a point on each one, 
So I'll go along, but I'm not actually touching. I'm just making a point on the on the six points of a hexagon. So I can make this star that big, that big, that big. That big. Right. So make six points. Then I'm going to come in and I'm going to just come in. Look, I could come right to the center and make really, really tight star. I'm going to come in, I don't know, one, two, three, four. What about I'll come in four. That will do. So now I'm on that hexagon, middle, middle of the road. So as I come around, I'm just going to make points there. Always on the same hexagon. Right. And now I've got my... I've got my points, you see, here. These are my points. So I can choose now. I can I can leave my my grid behind me like that and just make a let me just look, I'll show you what I do. It's it's very, very easy. But you just gotta get your points in the right place. Right, there you go. Hold it down like that. And then it's up to you whether you use a ruler. With the, the longer these points, probably best to use a ruler, right? But when they're short like this, I can usually get away with just doing it by hand. As long as I've got a bit of elbow room. Let's have a look. What glasses have I got on here again? Where are my day medners? Definitely time to go to Specsavers. Right. Here we go. See? So then I'm going to come out to there. And then I'm just adjusting. The points just, uh, they dictate the size, don't they? And you just join up the dots. And you give yourself a really beautiful six-point star. There. There. And then when I lift that away from there, let's just come around the back. There you go. So I've got a nice six point star. At this point, I'll take my ruler and I'll join up. Ah, that's okay. Ideally, right, re tell, let, me, let me give you a good tip. Top tip, top tip, top tip. Let me just find my points. Let me just find my points again. Make a point in the middle. Just make a dot in the middle so that you know what the center is. It just does help. It helps when you're lining up the ruler because it means now that everything I do, I have to run through that dot. You see? So now I'll go through here and I'll just add, just join up the dots. There you go. Join up the points. And do you remember when we were doing this the other day, what we, what we were saying was, this is like one of those old German... Um, Baubles. I, I have them from my nan. I'm going to dig them out. I'm going in the. I'm going in the loft. I'm going to dig them out before we do these in a couple of days' time. Right. Ah, oh, you see, and I'm missing one. This one here. That's it. Excuse me. So I've got my my six pointer. You see. But do you remember those baubles? This is what we were talking about really old-fashioned ones where you they they're, they're it's embedded inside yeah this long one for example that one really reminds me of my Oma this one and and you could put your finger in that bit there you could actually put your finger in this is all really glittery this might be red or dark blue and then inside there it's silver do you know the ones I mean so I was thinking Right, so now we've we've reduced the bauble size, we've reduced the star size, we know that's a piece of cake, right? But that was for the person who's just joined us today, you know. There are no experts in the building, and, and when you dip in and out, I think more and more now people are going to be dipping in and out, and they can always catch up and look back, can't they? But with a weekend in between, I think it's a good idea to have a little recap. So what we'll do now, we'll show you how to add stars into the little bauble. So we've done this, we've made the stars smaller. So it's not just the snowflakes now, we're gonna to go to the stars, right? So this is gonna go, the bauble's going over the top, 
I'm going to take my HB and now I can decide which size stars I want to use. Do you see? So I could put a star there like that and I can turn it at any angle I fancy because they're stars, aren't they? How about like this? And then you just add your your star to the layer that your bauble is on, okay? And I wouldn't even... These lines, I'll do them afterwards. See, so now I'm on that layer. Do you see what I'm doing? So let's just get the stars in the right... Let's, let's put them in. I'm going to put one like that, like so. So all the stars are within the bauble. There you go, so you've got your shape. I mean, how you couldn't draw that that fast if you didn't have a template, could you? I sure couldn't. See, then I can put one there like that off the, off the edge. And it looks so nice. Right, and then once we've done that, put the center in, gives you a good orientation. That one looks a bit ropey. <laughs> what happened there? Oh, that'll do. Right. Get caught up in the detail, don't you, Barbara? Yes, you do. Right, and then maybe we could put another larger one over there, just a little bit. This is right round the corner. So you've got your different... This is the point that I'm trying to make here. Right? You've got your... Um, your different shapes, stars, on here, and you hang on to that, and then when you go to make your baubles, you've got your different size baubles as well, and then you can really mix and match it up, you see? So then whether or not you have a... Let's have a... Oh, that will look good, like that. So you just fill your bauble like that. Right, so then once you've done that, you see, now, you, you get what I'm talking about. I'm sure you absolutely do. And then once you've done that, then you take your, your ruler. You see, my, my personal opinion is that you do this bit when we've transferred it on the paper. Once you get to the card, I wouldn't worry about it's the shapes, it's the outlines that are the bits you want to transfer. And then the, the details you can do on the actual card, yeah? So we've done all the templates. We've learned how to reduce all the bauble sizes. We know how to do that too. And now we're gonna transfer it. So we've been working on tracing paper. Some of you have been working on a light wave, which is bingo, happy days. But we're trying to keep, you know, keep it real here. For those of you who, who aren't power crafters, you know, that you haven't got all that stash, all the gear, you know, it may, maybe you'll get that motivated that you'll say, do you know what, I want to do this properly, proper, you know. Um, but for the time being, the tracing paper and an HB pencil is going to do the job for you. <clears throat> right, now, what are we going to transfer it onto? Copy paper or card? It's easy, isn't it? It's whatever you prefer. So we've got, at Clarity, <clears throat> we've got card. We've got stencil card, we've got card blanks. You can go st straight to the card blank or you can do it on card and then cut it up. I'm gonna do the card. So I'm making a big one. I'm making a big one. So what we've got now, right, let me take this out of the way. Take the copy paper out of the way. And we've got a piece of stencil card, right? White card. You could use watercolor paper. That'd look lovely if you wanted to do watercolor. Now's the time to decide what you want to put it on, okay? And what your composition is going to be. So you've got to have a little bit of an idea where you want to go with your baubles. I'm teaching you the trick how to do it. I'm not going to make a finished card. I'm just showing you the transfer trick. Um, but maybe I'll make a card at the same time. So what we're going to do now, all our work is on this side of the... All our work's on this side of the baubles, right? Now I'm going to flip the whole thing over so that if I do this, the, the lead, the graphite's on this side, yeah? 
So let me say I'm going to, I want to put my bauble, <clears throat> I'm going to put it there, like so. And then I'm going to hang it. I'm going to maybe trim it back a bit. Maybe I'll, I'll put it, I'm not sure. I'm going to put it there. Give myself a little room for play, see? And if I'm not mistaken, if that's F front, let me just, let me make sure I've got it the right way around. If I press on there like that, what's the front? Is that the front? Is that the front? Or is, if it says F for front, then it may be on that side. I've done it twice. Let me just check something. If I do this, let me just check it. F for front, right? So how's that work? Let me just check what I'm doing. Because I've obviously drawn it on some side. The only way to find out... Oh, I hate to do it. Right, so this is not the front, is it, Barbara? That's what threw me. So I'm, I'm saying that we've got to transfer it. And now, if I come in on this side, let me see if it works. Because otherwise, there you go. I'm getting my edge now. Okay, so you flip it so that your work, your pencil work, is underneath. Yeah? That's the first thing we're going to do. And I could use my HB pencil now and go again and again and again. So I can flip it this way, then I'll flip it that way, then I'll flip it that way, then I'll flip it that way. But what I do need to do is make sure that when I turn it over, I've actually got a transfer. Does that make sense? I confused myself for a minute there. Now, if I use... Let's have a look at all these pencils that we've got. You can... See, to my mind, you could use an HB pencil my lovely little HB, backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards, and I'll get the marks. Or you can use a softer pencil, like a, a 6B or a, a 2B or a 3B. They're going to be blacker. See, the higher the number, the blacker the pencil. Um, if you use an H, it will be harder, and so the sharper the line. It's entirely... It's up to you what you want. I'm going to stick with HB. Now, let me just... Let me make sure this is working. I've thrown myself a bit here. Uh, sharpener. And then what we're going to do is transfer this to our card. Because then we want to ink it, don't we? <laughs> right, OK. Now let's see if this works first. Oh, don't! And also, bear in mind that you're not working on scrap, that you're actually working on your... <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe I just scribbled all over? Look, stupid girl. Got a bit of copy paper. Right, okay. Now let's see if this works. Because if I come in here like this and I come round, let's get the shape first before we do anything. I just want to check that it's working. Oh, yeah, okay. Heat's off. And then we're going to come round here. Let's get the shape in first before we do anything. And check you check it's working as you go. Just yeah, it's definitely on. We're on. Right, and now we're gonna transfer the artwork. So I need to do this job. Right, because I, cause I don't it shouldn't be black on this side, but no it's not. I can, I can get away with it. I just don't want to get my hands all black while I'm working. So I'm going to lean on something, piece of copy paper, groovy guard, whatever you've got in front of you. Right. And then come round. The hardest bit is the outline, isn't it? The shape, I think. Right, round we go. Let's get the shape in. We're going to transfer and make art now. We've got all our templates, we've done all that bit. Right, and we'll do the big one together, and then maybe you could have a practice with the smaller one, can't you? Have a go. Right, let's just make sure we've got the shape. Absolutely. Yeah, that'll do. I missed that bit there. 
Okie dokie. So now I've got the shape down and now I'm going for the now I'm going for the um, snowflakes. Right, here we go. And we're just going to get that shape in. So it's quite a, it's a hand-drawn affair, isn't it, this? But we did all the work. Do you remember when we did the, we, we put the mantle on the snowflakes? That was when we did all the work. Yeah, good enough. I can see enough to be able to draw. There's got to be enough of a transfer that you can draw it. So what you're doing is you're pushing the pencil line. Yeah. You're pushing the pencil line onto the card, aren't you? So if you miss it, you can miss it. I'm sure we can make up the difference, can't we? Let's have a look. I can certainly see what I'm doing, can you? And the more you do this, the, the more you go backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards, the more graphite, more blackness you'll pick up and it'll get better and better. Sorry, I just lent on my microphone. All right. Sorry about that. How's it working? Are we all right for sound? Are you all quiet because you're concentrating? There, let's have a look. What's this one? <laughs> I can't see what I'm doing. Oh yeah, okay. That's it. It's a very... Oh yeah, okay. You've got to concentrate on this, haven't you? To see what you're doing. There, and then we'll do those little cheeses, like the Trivial Pursuits cheeses on the inside. There we are. Just remember, all you're doing here is pushing the pencil lines onto your artwork. See if it's worked. Oh yeah, that's good enough. Now I'll do the little one. Are you cool with this? What's the time? Oh, can't be already. I spent so much time. Well, no, that's not true. We did. We did do a couple of new things, didn't we? Reducing the size. This won't take long though. Round we go. We've done all the artwork now. Now it's just technical. But the best part of this is going to be when we do the shading. So I really want to do that with you because I think you'll get a real buzz off it. See how it works. Yes. And now for the big one. Now I've got my eye in. Now I'm going for the big one. Cool? And this is only the sketch that we're laying down. In a minute we're going to do the pen. This is good. I think one of the best things about this is that we're working this out from scratch, you know? We're doing this from scratch. There's no... All right, we've got a template to give us a guide, but it's our own artwork, you know? It's your artwork. These are your, your doodles, your, your snowflakes. And in all the years that I've been doing art, I'll be honest, I don't think I've ever managed to do a, a freehand snowflake before now. It's only when you stop and, and break it down and you think, oh, okay. Actually, that's not that difficult, is it, when you... Once you've got a template... Have you got one now? You sorted it. I saw some fan... That one's went a bit wrong. I saw some fantastic... Um, Snowflakes and stars and designs, I think we'd call them, on uh, Clarity. Let's have a look. How's this working out? 
Good enough. Certainly good enough to be able to ink over the top in a minute. Hey, is yours working? And the thing about it is it's not just a one use, is it? Because in a minute, I'll be able to, the, the, the lines that I'm using on this side, in a minute, I'm going to flip the whole thing and I can make another ball, but it will just be in reverse, you see? And you just go backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. So jobs are good and we're golden, as they say. We're golden. We're golden. There. Up we go. I already put a little bit of shading in just to see if it looked right. Here we are, nearly there now. Hey, I reckon. Just this last little bit. Are you going to make your own Christmas cards this year? I like this bit. I like this bit a lot. See, and once you've done this, cool. See, and then I did here, I did some shadow just to see what it looked like, but I'll probably do this bit on the other, on the, see what I did on the actual, if I come in tight, let me see if I come in tight, if you can see what I, what I kind of shaded. You see what I, I just wanted to have a look? They're like the lines, it's like a bit serrated. So, so, but we can do that on the other side, can't we? When we take this away now, what we should have is a really, look, I've, I've got a really good starting place now to do my inking, really cool. Let me come in tight on, see if we can see this. See, we, that is perfectly good enough for me to be able to draw my ink over the top, which is going to be the best bit. So, have you done that? Have you done that? Right, okay, so we've done that, we've done that. How about, should we start the inking? Why not? It won't take long. How long did it take to transfer that? Let's get the inking going. Hey. Okay. Let's at least do one together. 005, 001. Have you got these? Have you got these? If you haven't, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. Use, use a colouring pencil, use a biro, use what you've got. But these are good. Okay. This is what we use, just in case you want to know. This is what we use. They're micron pens and they come in all different thicknesses. But they're great because they're waterproof. So that means, for example, remember when I did the, um, I don't know where I put that toadstool though. Do you remember when I did the toadstool and I did it, I don't know where I, where I put him. It's not important. But I... I had a watercolour pad on the go and I did a toadstool. But the point I'm trying to make is that what happens is you, when you draw on the watercolour paper, just like this, this could be watercolour paper, then when you go to do watercolour over the top, this is waterproof, it won't move. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Okay, so that's why these are good. So I just need a little bit of copy paper just to get my eye in on the pencil or on the pen. I'm going to use the number one. There we go, just get it started. So just twist it. You don't need to press hard with these. If you press hard, you crunch the nib. Don't want to do that. So let's get the outline going. Let's do the outside first, because that's going to be the tricky bit, isn't it? So I'm going to come in on this camera because I want to get my eye in. And I've got my Dame Edna's on. So I'm going to come in now, and I'm just going to get my eye in on this line. And I'll come round till I get to a bauble to a snowflake and then I'll, I can breathe then see so I'll come round and where there's a long piece where there's nothing on it I would suggest you sweep through so that's going to be the challenge that bit isn't it <laughs> right ready and then when you when you get to a join like this you go back in over yourself and stop and then you go back in over yourself and go again so you see how I go back on myself and then I'll start again so let me get my eye in 
Right, here we go. And then we'll sweep round. Good enough. And then I'll come round again. I mean, if you've got a cup that's the right size, then draw around it by all means. But I, I think, I think hand drawn is good. You know, hand drawn is good. There you are. Right now we're going to have a bit of a. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm right, I'm going to go quiet now, people. <laughs> so I've got to get around there. Shush. Right here we go. And breathe. <laughs> there we are. Come up there. That's funny, isn't it? When you do that, everything else is a piece of cake afterwards. So we'll just get the old outside in. That's what I think. We'll get the outside in place and then we can ink up the rest. I'm going to tighten that up a little bit there. I think that looks a bit weird. There we are. That will do. Right, and now comes the baubles. So I am going for the 005 on the baubles. How are we doing for time? We've still got 10 minutes, have we? Yeah. Excellent. Right, let me get a good 005 going. I want to get a thin line on these. Okay. Thin line. I'm going to start on the small one. Play it safe. Start on the small one and get our eye in, eh? Right, here we go. And and the other thing about these snowflakes is that's what they are. So if they're a little bit jiggly, that's exactly what you want it to be. If you could make it jiggly, you're probably shaking that much, you'll make it jiggly without any effort whatsoever. I am. Look. Jiggle, jiggle. It just gives that lovely hand-drawn. You've certainly got to look at where you're going though, haven't you? But this is the doodle. This is it, isn't it? It's when we've done all our artwork. Look, oh, it's going to come together so nicely. You see? Now it's starting to come together so nicely. Right, I'm going for the second largest one next. Building up, building up to the large one. Here we go. So we'll start again here. Right, if you want it to be jiggly, right, let me just, it's, out, it's up to you. If you want it jiggly, then if you hold it upright, like perpendicular, if you hold it uh, like that as you go, it will automatically be jigglier than if you hold it like a pen. Right, so you try it on a bit of scrap. If you hold it like that and you go along, you'll see it's just not as smooth as if you go like that. Okay, so it's up to you. <clears throat> I'm not sure yet, I haven't made my mind up. I've got between now and now to do it. Right, I think I might go a bit jiggly. I'm gonna go perpendicular. I'm gonna hold upright and go a bit jiggly. Because they are, they are jiggly. They're ice, aren't they? There, I definitely am glad I did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check out the difference. I mean, to me, this is just an experiment anyway, I, I, you know. But if you hold it upright, like I just suggested, we'll have a look in a minute at the difference. Just let me get my eye in. I'm aware of the time as well. But we've used the same pen, but it looks very different when you hold it upright versus like a pen. Hmm. You'll see what I mean when I, when I get in tight in a minute. Take your time. I'm not going to rush just because I can feel that 11 o'clock's looming. That would be wrong. Now what am I doing here? Oh yeah, this, these little cheeses, the little Trivial Pursuits cheeses. 
There we go. Nice. Cool. Right, let's have a look at the two. Let's investigate, shall we? If you look up there, let me just, let it just focus. You see how the large one is jagged by comparison. It's just it's rawer. Now we're going for the big one. We've got time. Yes, we do. Right, come on. Large one coming up. Holding it like that. I'll go to the other camera so I can get my head over the top. And then we're going to go round. Right. Do one side and then we'll make the other side symmetrical. That'll do. Let's do the arms first. The A lot of the work in these will be with the shadow, the shading. And I'll worry about the middle bit afterwards. Okay. Here we go. Nice, eh? Yeah, this is what I call relaxing. Okay. This is it. Wanna... This is when you get in the zone and you really relax. This is the one. Because you've already done the design and all you're doing now is just tracing it out. But I wouldn't want to try this without the pencil work underneath. Hey? I tell you what, this would look beautiful with glitter on it as well, wouldn't it? I think that would look so lovely. I like black and white. Grace, grey and then glitter. Maybe I have to give that a go. Hey, There we go. And then tomorrow, i tell you what I think we should do. Rather than rush now and spoil it, if you have a chance, and then, and then tomorrow, we could get our pencils out and we could add the shadow to make it look three-dimensional. What do you think? Yeah, I love this. I bet yours are all different, aren't they? accomplishment you know I don't know if you realize this is actually a real piece of draftsmanship really Isn't that nice and now I'm going to do the diamonds Diamonds in the middle. Are you happy with yours? Cool, very cool. How about that? That's very nice. That's very nice indeed. Hmm. So, and I think what I'll do is, I'll put some, tomorrow, rather than rush it now, I think we've done plenty. 
that takes some focusing, doesn't it? You know, the transfer, then the inking. Let it dry now, let it dry, just give it five minutes. And then when you're, when you're sure it's dry, take your rubber and just rub out the pencil lines, just in case they're showing. Because what you'll find is when you do that, you'll find that your, your, your ink work will pop it's because there's still a lot of grayscale around it, that will make it pop and make it sharper, right? And then what we'll do tomorrow, we'll take our pencils, our HB pencils or our graphite pencils, and we'll we'll put a drop shadow in. I did it on the I did it on my um, on my tracing paper just to get my eye in. And we'll do but we'll do it on card or on paper, whatever it is you're using. And I think um, yeah, let's make it look really cool. Yes? And and maybe that would be a good exercise as well. To try a snowflake, try 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 a bauble, right? Do the outside. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Right, let's see if this is it's an experiment for those of you who are right into this. Do the transfer like this. But the outside one, just ink these. Don't ink the bauble. And we'll create the globe just with shading rather than with a black line, right? So this is great for a card, but try another one without actually inking out the outside. And then we'll, what we'll do is we'll, we'll have a go at doing the shading to make it look like a real ball with no black or grey. Give it a go. Why not? That'll be for the for those of you who really like that 3D effect. We'll try that out as well. Remember like when we did the um, the water droplets? Do you remember when we were under the sea and we did the water droplets? That's what I'm, t that's what I'm talking about. Yeah? Give that a go. Anyway, it's gone 11 o'clock so I'm going to turn into a pumpkin in a minute. Have a smashing Monday. Uh, Lucy, thank you so much for your help and I will see you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Enjoy the sunshine if it's sun shining and, uh, and enjoy your doodling if you're staying indoors. Lots of love. Bye-bye now. Cool.